just waiting on a few settings to finish up here so I'll be getting started very soon just bear with me okay folks so it looks like we're good to go here uh, you're very welcome along to another live stream I'll be talking about uh, driving test tips the COVID restrictions I'll be sharing with you some advice uh, from the RSA and also be talking about licenses, foreign licenses, and a bit about the NCT as well. So on screen there, you'll see that we have um, some website addresses. So the first one over there is uh, the rsa.ie, www.rsa.ie. So that's the website for the Road Safety Authority, which uh, looks after licensing and driving tests. So I might be referring to that um, every so often. Um, NDLS.ie then is the second one. So the NDLS is the National Driver Licensing Service and they look after licensing, um, giving out licenses and applying for licenses, that kind of stuff. And they do, um, they, they look after all that. So uh, whether it's a learner permit, whether it's a full license, so I might be referring to that soon. And the third one there, NCTS, www.ncts.ie, is the National Car Testing Service. Uh, so they look after, that's where the NCT, uh, where you get your NCT. They have uh, centers all over the country. So their services are going as normal. I might be referring to that as well. And the website, or sorry, the email address at the bottom there you'll see is urgentdrivingtest at rsa.ie. So that's a uh, email address for anybody who is an essential worker, say like someone working in healthcare or in essential retail or something like that. If you haven't got a test date, you've applied for it, you're waiting a long time and you're an essential worker, email that uh, email address, urgentdrivingtest at rsa.ie and that's a special address where they will hopefully be able to uh, put you on a priority list and get you a driving test quicker, okay? So let's see then. I just want to go through a few, um, I suppose we call them announcements. Um, first of all, just just a, a, what I want to do is I want to just kind of go through a summary of the um, restrictions as they stand. I see just a few people tuned in there. Alexander Owens, hey Dane. Hello, Alexander Owens. And Franklin Okanuya, hey Dane, how's things? I just wanted to know what advice would you give when breaking in general which mirrors to look at yeah well we'll get to that just briefly franklin you know it depends on how much you break so i'd always say break early and break gradually um you definitely want to look at the center mirror first that's the one close to you and then maybe the two side mirrors because you don't want to be casting your eyes out to the left side mirror first because your eyes are going to be kind of drawn away from the road um it just does depend like if, if it's a bit busier you might want to maybe double check the mirrors for any cyclists but you know it, it, it depends on on the situation um so first of all folks and thanks for that franklin and i'll get back to the comments in a second i just want to give you a quick rundown of the uh guidelines as they are at the moment okay so from midnight on wednesday the 21st a couple of days ago we went to level five restrictions and that has certain implications for driving tests and licensing which i'm going to briefly explain now um uh, simply as i possibly can so we'll be at level five for um, six weeks and driving lessons and uh, driving tests can take place under certain circumstances because they've been deemed an essential service. So if you're doing a driving test, it's deemed essential. If you're getting driving lessons, it's deemed essential. If you are working in essential services like essential healthcare, retail, but there's lots of other areas that come under essential services as well, which we'll get to. Um, so... Let me see, um, what do we have here? Uh, yeah, also the driver theory test is not classified as essential. So all theory tests from Wednesday, so the, the last theory test on Wednesday afternoon basically is gonna be the last one for six weeks. So while the practical test and uh, driving lessons are ongoing in certain situations, not the driver theory test. It's not classified as uh, essential. So. If you have a theory test, it'll be rearranged and you will you will have to do it on another occasion. Okay, they'll rearrange it free of charge. You won't you won't have to pay for it. Don't worry about that. So next one then, um, so essential workers, yeah. 
So there is a list. If you go to the RSA website, it's the the um over there the um website address rsa.ie. You will be able to find updated information on what is an essential worker, because on the rsa.ie website you will be able to, you will get a link on that site to uh, gov.ie. That's www.gov.gov.ie. And there's a list of essential workers there, and it's not just health and retail. From what I could see, it comes there's certain manufacturing uh, jobs, um, in agriculture, um, you know, farm workers, things like that. So it's not it's not just uh, someone who works in Tesco or Super Valley or someone who's a doctor, nurse, or healthcare worker. So just check that out uh, for for the most up to date information there. Um, a lot of people have asked me, well, how are they going to know if I'm a an essential worker? What, like how will, will I get turned away from my driving test? Uh, no is the answer. The RSA do not keep or maintain information about you, your life, your your job or anything like that. So they're not going to be looking for identification. They're not going to be looking for a letter from a supervisor or a manager or, or, or someone above you. It is up to you, the learner driver. It's up to you to, to decide um, if you are going to go forward and if you are an essential worker now it's 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 obvious enough if you're an essential worker you're an essential worker but basically what i'm saying in simple language is the rsa are not going to quiz you or test you the driving tester i mean when you do your test it's up to you to decide for yourself if you're going to go the, the rsa would prefer that if you are not um an essential worker that you would cancel your test and therefore that cancellation could be made made available for someone who is an essential worker, but they're not going to turn you away. Turn you away. They're not going to check on your what your job description is. They're not going to interrogate you. So so just be aware of that. But they're leaving it up to you to decide. Personal responsibility. Okay. So next then, what have we got here? Um. If you are, if you have a test coming up and you're not an essential worker, um, as per the list on the uh, RSA and the www.gov.ie website, if you're not an essential worker, they are asking you to cancel, and you can do that via a web form on the RSA website. So that web form, you'll you'll find a link to it on www.rsa.ie, the first website address there on the on the screen. Um, with that, you can log in using your driver number, your name, and your date of birth, and you just follow the on-screen instructions there on that web form, and you will be able to cancel your test then if you're not an essential worker, thereby opening up your slot for someone else who is an essential worker. You won't be charged. The RSA will reschedule your test free of charge, and you will get a test um, at a later date. Uh, they are asking you, don't call. RSA don't call them don't email them do it on that web form um, it would be more convenient um, if you do it that way okay so moving on there then um, as I said to you at the start of the stream if you are an essential worker and you are waiting a long time for your driving test you haven't got a driving test yet email that address you see on screen there urgent driving test at rsa.ie and it the plan is then that the powers that be will arranged to get you a quicker test date so you can get your driving test done if you are an essential worker urgent driving test at rsa.ie there's a five kilometer travel restriction as i'm sure you're, you've you've heard about so you're meant to stay at home during the level five restrictions and you're not supposed to travel outside of the five kilometer radius between your house and five kilometers outside your house but that doesn't apply if you're going to do a driving test okay so if you are if you live like 10 or 20 kilometers away from the driving test center you're not going to be penalized or uh, you're not going to be punished if for, you know because you're breaking the five kilometer uh, radius uh, the same applies if you're getting driving lessons now i haven't seen any specific uh, point on the rsa website or anything like that to say that it applies to lessons but i'm going to assume it does because it would make sense that it, that it would apply to driving lessons so you are allowed to go outside the five kilometers to do your test, to do an NCT test as well, uh, to get your license, and to the best of my knowledge, to just to the best of my knowledge, I'll say, also to get 
driving lessons, okay? Also on that, it's probably no harm to have a letter of some type or some kind of information on your job, for example, like that, that you are an essential worker or that, you know, just in case you're stopped by the guards. Um, it's not like mandatory to have that letter, but it's probably no harm to, so you can give to the guards so, so that they'll know the, the reason that you're outside the 5K, just in case you are stopped by them, okay? Um, okay, so that's that's the story there with, um, with that. I'm going to come back to some announcements in a minute um, on the NDLS, okay? So that, that first section just covered about the driving test. Um, I'm going get, to get to a few comments here now, and then I'm going to come back and talk about the driver licensing thing, okay? So, and again, thanks everyone. We've got some good few viewers there tuning in. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Just let me know in the comments if any questions about driving. I'll do the, my best to answer them. I can't guarantee I have an answer for everything, but I'll do my best. And uh, you're all very welcome along. Thanks for tuning in. So, Claude Plunkett, hi, how are you? Stay safe. Well, as we say, I'll square the Claude Fonslon, August Fonsolvalta. Stay safe and stay well yourself. Uh, not proper Python. What a great name that is. Hey Dane, just want to let you know that I love your videos. That's great. So do I. Uh, they're very informative and you're an amazing teacher. Well, you know, just, I've been called worse. Not proper Python. Thank you very much. I enjoy doing it and it's my pleasure to help you. So thanks for tuning in. Phil Hall. Hi, Diane. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, Dane actually is the name, as in the great Dane. But, you know, you can just call me Dane. How are you? Well, I'm, I'm okay. I'm learn you. Phil Hall is a, has a learner's license is up in May, hoping to apply for my test in November. When do I need to apply for my second license? As I don't think I'll have my test by then. Well, Phil, Mayall Flower, I would advise you if you don't, if you have a feeling that you're not going to be able to apply because your permit is running out of date. Uh, I presume you mean learner permit. Um, in May. So what are we in? I'm sure we're in October now. Um, well, without seeming too casual there, Phil, you, you do have, you do still have plenty of time, like, you know, that, like, uh, I mean, May is, is what, seven months away or something like that? So that there is still plenty of time on that. I would advise you, though, Phil, if you haven't heard anything three months before your permit is up, so what's three months before May? February, is it? February, March, April, May, yeah. Because you can, you can apply to renew your permit three months before it goes out of date, so... I would if you haven't if you don't have a test run like that Phil by by February is that what I said February yeah make sure you apply for a new permit in February and hopefully that will that will solve that but you do have time uh, I wouldn't rest on on your laurels though but at the moment you do have time but just keep an eye on it because time has a habit of flying by uh, oh if, if Phil there's just spell checking no problem Phil uh, best wishes Phil let me know if any more questions Jenny Olatunji. Do you re do you recommend? I'm just gonna go back to Jenny. Was it Jenny's comment? Yeah, got it. I'm, I've just seen a donation there, folks, for eleven euro. I'll get down to that in a sec. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Uh, Jenny Olatunja. Yeah. Do you recommend slowing down to first gear at uh, traffic lights? Uh, well, that's an interesting question, Jenny. The short answer is no, uh, and the long answer is it depends on the situation. So let's say, for example, you're coming up to the lights. Okay. Um, it's been red for a long time, and as you're, say, I don't know, 20 metres from the line, say you're first in the line, you're 20 metres from the line, lights have been red a long time, 15, 20 metres from the line, you see that the light has just gone green. If you're going very, very slow then, you could, and you know, you're on the verge of stopping, maybe you're 10, 50 metres, whatever, you could certainly go into first gear then to stop the car from struggling. But if you're coming to the lights and it's just literally gone red, like it's a busy set of lights, literally just gone red like four or five seconds ago. I don't really see the point in rolling into first gear then because you're just creating more work for yourself. Uh, you're, you're taking the hand off the wheel for longer. You're, you're moving the gear stick when there's no need. You could just simply stop in second gear. Stop in second gear. Pull up the handbrake. Always good to use the handbrake at lights. Uh, wait in first gear so you're ready to go, especially if you're first in queue. Uh, so it depends there, Jenny. Like, like if you think you're going to move off ver very soon, I would probably think about going to first gear. But if you're going to be stopped a while, I would just say stop in second gear, handbrake, and then wait in first gear. Now, you could wait in neutral if you're further back in the queue, give your foot a rest. It, see, it's a, it's it, there's so many different options there, Jenny, because there's so many different um, situations. It's not There's not one simple answer. But it's a good question, and thank you very much for it. 
Uh, Jenny again then, tips for reversing around the corner. Jenny, I have so many tips and I have plenty of videos on that. Jenny always ends up being too far out. I've tried looking at side mirrors. I've also watched your videos. Well, yes, Jenny, the reason you're too far out though is because one of two reasons. You're either not um, turning soon enough, okay? You're leaving it too late to turn or you're not turning fast enough. Now, you shouldn't be turning like really fast like a, like a turnabout, but you should be turning slow and steady. It does depend on the corner. On a sharp corner, you might have to turn a little, little bit sooner and a little bit quicker. On a more gradual corner, you should turn more gradually. The truth, Jenny, is it depends on the corner and you have to practice it to get more confidence at it, okay? But in simple, in short, a short, simple answer, Jenny, if you're, if you're ending up being too far out, um, now I'm not sure, do you mean on the corner? Okay, so if you're too far out on the corner, you're not turning fast enough. And at the end then, you're obviously not straightening up and you're not you're not turning the wheel left to come in. I have a great video on the on the reverse around the corner and on quarter steers. So check out my video on, on just type in Dane Tai quarter steers and you'll see how to get in closer. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions there, Jenny. Moving on then, a few more comments, folks, and I'm going to go back to some more announcements. Um, so who was after Jenny? Uh, let's see, Claire Tansy, name rings a bell. Hi, Dane, I am due to sit my test in November but I'm not an essential work. Ah, yes, I knew the, I knew I was going to get loads of these type of questions. So I'm going to cancel the fair play to you, Claire, yeah. My license is also going out of date um, in November. Do you know if my license will be extended? Yes, indeed, you will have, um, your, your driving license does already have an extension. Um, hang on now, your, let me see. You mean your learner's permit, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to presume... Um, by process of elimination that you mean learner's permit uh, so yeah your permit is going to be extended by four months there anyway so you don't you don't have to worry about that and the, the, the testers will know about that you don't have to let them know so if your learner permit is going out of date in November um, it's let me see now it's in November let me just check that there now um, yeah no it's not if, if your learner permit goes out of date in October you have uh, an extension of four months. But if your learner permit goes out of date from the 1st of November onwards, um, there is no extension on that. So you, you want to just be careful there and make sure you reapply for a new learner's permit there, Claire, because the, the four-month extension only is only applies for learner permits that go out of date between August and October. Um, but fair play to you, because you're not an essential worker, you're going to cancel that. That's great. That, that shows someone is following the advice. And fair play to you, Claire, because that means you're going to open up um, a slot for an essential worker. So well done on that. Uh, next, then, uh, just get this comment done. And I'll come back then to the end to the comp to the things on the NDLS. So Noel Green, where do I place my hands while driving and then turning left and right? As I've heard a few different ways to do this, and I want to get it right while practicing for my test well without being sarcastic no on the wheel will be a start um let me just read that comment again uh where do i place my hands when driving and then turning left or right as i've heard a few different ways well that's an interesting question so when you're driving there no usually the best place to have your hands is in the, the quarter to three position okay so 345 if you imagine like a clock and the reason for that is, if you have it in the 345 position, your left hand and your right hand are closer to the controls, like they're close to the indicators, the left hand and the right hand is closer to the wipers and stuff like that. It also creates more of a space uh, between your between your um, forearms, so if the airbag does deploy, there's more space there and the airbag is more likely to hit your face and your organs here, which is what it's meant to do, rather than scalding your arms, okay? Uh, so, so as a general, in general, you should have it in the quarter of the tree position. And then when you're turning, um, well, just don't cross your hands there, um, Noel. You know, like so, if you're turning left, for example, you bring bring the left hand up. Um, so can you see that there? So you bring the left hand up, and then so you, so you kind of pull down with the left, and you push up with the right. So kind of like that. Just don't 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 cross the hands like that. Okay. Uh, if you just check out any of my videos, Noel, on turns like like. Uh, position turning left, position turning right, that or observation, anything like that. You, you'll see me doing, turning the wheel there. I actually have a video on steering as well. Uh, as well. Just to type into YouTube, Dane Thai Steering, and you'll see what I mean there. But thanks for that comment, um, Noel. Okay then, so we're going to get to Emer Halligan next, but 
first of all, let's go to some announcements on the um, NDLS. So over there on the left, folks, you'll see the website NDLS.ie. It's a great website. NDLS stands for National Driver Licensing Service. Uh, very user-friendly website. They, they, they make it easy to navigate and have lots of good announcements there, whether it's to do with COVID or foreign licenses or whatever. So uh, for any information there, check out ndls.ie uh, for the most up-to-date information. But regarding licenses, um, the main points on this are you should attend the NDLS Centre to um, apply for your learner's permit or licence if you are an essential worker. Okay, so if you if you correspond to being on the list with, with on the list of essential workers on www.gov.ie website, um, and they will process your application, and uh, you know they'll take your photo down there, and they'll take ID off you, all that kind of stuff, and PPS. Make sure you have your PPS number with you. Um, so if you are an essential worker, attend the NDLS center as normal. If you're not an essential work, an essential worker, they ask that you cancel your appointment and that will open it up for somebody else then to avail of that slot. Okay. Um, again, like, like the, like I was saying with the driving test, the NDLS are not going to hold information on people. So if you have an appointment to attend an NDLS center to get your license or to get your permit, they're not going to quiz you or ask you, are you an essential worker? If you're not an essential worker, out the door. That's not going to happen. They don't hold information like that. So don't if you turn up and you know you're not going to get quizzed or interrogated on that, okay? Um again, as I was saying before, the five kilometer um limit on travel, you are exempt from that if you're traveling to the NDLS Center to apply for your learner's permit or license. So don't worry about the five kilometer uh, limit in that case, okay? Um they do ask though that if you are going to um cancel because you're not an essential worker if you are going to cancel that you don't um that you don't call them uh you don't email them you you can do it on online um on the on the website and uh it will be certainly more convenient for them there then as well but another another thing as well just for people um who are updating who are getting a full license you, you don't always have to um, attend the NDLS center if you are applying for your full license. Like if you are under 70, if you have a verified MyGov um, account and you don't need any supporting documentation like medical report or any of that kind of stuff, you can actually do it online. You can actually apply for your, for your um, full license online uh, via the N N NDLS website. But it all depends if you have the verified mygov.ie uh, website. You, you'll need a public services card as well for that. Okay, so just to let you know, and and, and they are hoping to um, they are hoping to to expand that in the future so that more people will be able to apply online without the need to call to an NDLS center. But that's all that's all in the future. Um, okay then, so let's see what else we have there. And yes, over as I was saying in the last live stream, over 70s, uh, they will be contacted directly by the NDLS and they will be asked to do it by post to save them coming to the NDLS centre. And again, if an over 70s has booked an appointment slot, they are advised uh, to cancel that appointment so that somebody else can avail of it. Okay, so um, also folks, an extension so driving licenses have been extended by seven months and learner permits have been extended by four months the time frame on that is so if, if your driving license expires between the 31st of march and the 31st of august you have a seven month extension okay seven months so you you that in as part of the covid uh, for, uh restrictions here seven months on your full license uh learner permit then is four months so if your learning permit goes out of date up to and including the 31st of October uh, 2020, you do have an extension of four months. OK, you don't have well, if you if in the driving test, you don't have to say that you don't need a letter. The driving testers will know about that. OK, right. So that's the NDLS announcements done. I'll be coming on to the NCT and maybe some foreign licenses as well. But let's get back to a few comments here then. So, um, Emer Halligan, wasn't it? Yeah. Hi, Dan. Really enjoy your videos and live chat. I'm currently living in the UK and have my driving test booked here in February 2021. 
Okay, great. When I move back to Ireland at the end of next year, can I use the same UK license? Yes, Emer, it appears you can, but you're going to have to change it for an Irish license, okay? Uh, first of all, the best of luck with the test anyway. Um, I hope you I hope you do well. I hope you pass it. Um, you know, if you get lessons and practice, like the same as here, I'm sure you'll do a great job. But because of the whole Brexit thing and because it'll be next year, as obviously it'll be after 31st December 2020, if you do pass the test and you do come back with a full English license, you are going to have to change it for an Irish license. Okay, you will find more information on that on the NDLS website. Okay, so it's very important you remember that. Uh, you 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 will have to change that. Um, next, Aileen Whelan. Dane, if I cancel due to not being essential. Uh, worker will I go to the back of the queue good question um I don't think so I, I I'm not sure I well I know what you mean by the back of the queue um I haven't heard anything from the powers that be to say anything like that but what I would say is they will rearrange it uh they will rearrange it at no extra cost to you um as as opposed as relation to going to the back of the queue you see there's no such. There's really no such thing as the back of the queue because the people coming after you, the day after you, the, the the two days after you, the three days after you, they're all going to be behind you in the queue anyway. So I'm not really a hundred percent sure, Aileen. I I understand what you mean. I understand your fears, but I would just trust the system. Um, you, you can always ring ring them up or email them once all this thing died. They're asking you now for sorry that that you don't ring or email at the moment because they're a little bit short staffed and everything the way things are. But after a couple of weeks, you could certainly maybe get in contact with the RSA if you feel like after the lockdown period of level five, if, if you feel that it's, you know, it's been too long, you could certainly get in touch with them then. But um, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so we have to play it by ears. It's hard to know. There, there is a bit of a backlog. And, you know, what, what can I say? They're, they're doing their best to get through it. And they will get through it. Just, you have to just give it time. Uh, but the best look ailing to you in your test, Sa um, Smashy Rashi. What a great name. Do you think you can sit a test in a big car if you are used to it? That's an interesting question. Uh, yes, Smashy Rashi, you can sit a test in a big car if you are used to it. There's no like that. There's no problem with that as long as the car is you know taxed, insured, NCT, all that stuff. You've no warning lights. Your brake lights are working. All the usual things. Um, there's nothing wrong with it if you're comfortable. Go for it because I always say to people you should do the driving test in the car that you're most comfortable in. Don't do it in the driving instructor's car just, just because he or she says so. Um, don't believe any nonsense about higher pass rates in an instructor's car. I've no proof to say there is or there isn't. I would say, though, Smashy Rashi, that you're, if I was to choose one, I, I would probably say a smaller car is probably better, like a little small petrol car or something like that, because the driving test is going to be done primarily around town. You know, you'll be going over, like, speed bumps, doing lots of mini roundabouts, uh, you know, taking turns and corners in in kind of a city town environment so a little petrol car is going to be more suitable for that environment like turnabouts reversing on the corner that kind of stuff anyway as opposed to some big uh some big diesel saloon or something like that so uh you can sit in a big car if you want i think a smaller car would be more practical though but at the end of the day it is up to you kieran desmond hi then what should you bring with you to the driving test if you're doing a driving test just your learner's permit kieran desmond that's all um I mean, you, you, I mean, some people, I mean, I've given lessons to people and, and they come up and they come into the driving test and they have all, it's, it's almost like they're going to the airport or something or they're going to US immigration, they have their, they have their permit, they have a letter from an employer, they have their logbook, they have a whole heap of stuff. The only thing you need is your learner's permit. That's all. Just your learner's permit. The driving tester will have everything else. Um, if you want to bring the logbook with you, if, if, if it makes you feel better, you can bring it in with you, but they're not going to check the logbook. They're not going to go through the let the logbook and see all the lessons around like that. Just your learner permit. And the best of luck to you, Kieran. Jenny Olatunji again. My learner license expired in March and is extended to November. So with sorry, my my learner license expired in March and is extended to November. Will it be extended again or should I renew it? I think that will be extended again, Jenny. What it depends on when in March it went out of date. So let me see. Did it go in from the first of March? Yes. Yeah, so, if if your learner permit went out of date from the first of March onwards, um, 
you will you should be able to benefit from a second extension. So it would have been extended for what was it for the first it would have been extended for three months, I think, in March, if if memory serves me. Um and then um so that would have meant you would have extended for three months, so March, April March, April, May, you say June, I think that is, and then you would have got a further four months then June, July, August, Um see it it depends on the date, Jenny. I if if it if it's after the thirty first of October, there is no extension. Okay, so um, you, you just want to check that out. You kind of you look, your particular situation looks like you're you're a bit unlucky with dates. So if the if if your learner permit um expires before the uh first of November twenty twenty, it looks like you're not going to avail of an extension. But um, you know you have to do, but just better check that out and maybe get in touch with the with the RSA on that. Um, but uh, that's again. It it depends on the, on the date. So it looks like you might just have fallen between a few stools there. But um, let me know what happens anyway. Just just if you have the exact date, just just uh, get back to me on that. Uh, Amy O'Neill, thank you very much, Amy O'Neill, for your kind super chat donation there of eleven euro. Really, really appreciate it. And thank you as well, folks. Anybody out there who's sending me donations by PayPal, uh, really, really appreciate it. it certainly means a lot. And I uh, just want to say thank you. Dear Jacafri, hi then. What's the best or quickest way to recover from a stall? Gurv Mila Magud. Well, Tom Mila Fodge, August, August, uh, Tom Mila Fodge wrote a very on show. Deirdre, the first thing, pull up the handbrake. Pull up the handbrake because you don't want the car to roll back. Stalling itself is not a terribly big deal. But it could be a big deal if you stall and you freeze and the car starts rolling back, you know, five or ten meters. That's not really what you want to be doing, okay? So if you stall, immediately get that handbrake up, turn the car back on, make sure you're in first gear, and off you go again. Make sure you give it a bit of juice, you know, bring up the clutch and nice steady feet moving off. Maybe a bit of extra juice on the hill. Uh, it's never pleasant when you stall, dear. I I can certainly understand that. I've done. I've been in a car many times with people who've stalled. But my fir first tip to you: get the handbrake up. Maybe a bit of extra juice then for the hill, because as I said, stalling is not the big problem. But rolling back, that's when the issue becomes a problem. And it's not the stalling that would would fail you. Let's say it would be the rolling back that would fail you. So handbrake up and go from there. A few deep breaths. And remember as well, dear. Sometimes, you know, we all make mistakes, learners make mistakes. The mistake is never as big in your head as it is in the driving tester's head. Okay, so just try to remember that. A stall is not a disaster if you recover from it and just get on with it and don't dwell on it. Uh, Kanira Keen, when doing the reverse around the corner and if you feel like it's not being done right, can you ask to start again? Excuse me, or would you be penalised? It's up to you. You can start again. You can pull forward a little. You, you might not even need to go back to the very start. You could just pull forward a couple of meters and pull in a bit closer if you're going a bit wide. But you can do that. Like it's up to you. You can take responsibility. You don't have to ask the tester. Can I start again there? I, I don't feel good here. Just just do it. Don't 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 ask him. Just he's not he's not going to interfere. He or she is not going to interfere in the test anyway. His job is to analyze your driving and to direct you where to go. He's not going to interfere. Uh, unless he or she absolutely has to. So if you feel that you need to kind of go forward a little bit again, then do it. Absolutely do it. You might still have lost a mark, but I mean, you're better off doing it and making and making yourself feel better rather than continuing on in a kind of a negative frame of mind. Uh, whether or not you'll be penalised, it's... You, I mean, if you've made a mistake, you've probably already lost a mark, but you might feel better by starting fresh and you might have a better frame of mind afterwards. Um, what we penalise? I don't know. It depends on what you've did. It depends on how you know how big a mistake you made before and if you even made a mistake okay so yeah not, no problem with that can you keen okay michael michael penka thanks for everything dan my pleasure michael thanks for tuning in thanks for the comment do you recommend going to first gear at every t junction absolutely not uh it entirely depends on the junction i've made a video there recently on my youtube channel um well, let's see if i can get it here um no no I, just, I, I can't be bothered with that now um what did i call it again junctions made easy i think 
Let me see, I'll get a thumbnail here. Jun I think it's called Junctions Made Easy. Um, it was a recent video on the importance of going to first gear at certain junctions. Now, it's certain junctions, okay? So let's see here. I'm going to, going to get you the thumbnail. Yeah, here it is here, okay? So um, Junctions Made Easy. It's the one that's 16 minutes here, okay? I don't know if you can see that there now. So Junctions Made Easy. It's the one just underneath the reflectors video, okay? Junctions made easy, 16 minutes long, okay? Now, that's a video I made a few weeks ago on going to first gear and how important it is to go into first gear at certain junctions, like if it's a blind yield junction, you know, you need to creep out. But if you're coming to a T-junction, though, and it's a stop sign, and it's a fairly busy stop sign, I, I mean, you don't, you don't have to go to first gear before you stop. You can just go to first gear after you stop. Because if it's a busy junction and you have to stop anyway, there's not really a whole lot of point in going to first gear before you stop. Because, I mean, you have to stop anyway. So just stop. You know, get the handbrake up if you need. I presume you need the handbrake, so handbrake up. Um, staying in second gear. And then, once the handbrake is up, then go into first gear and wait in first gear. And then just do your looks, checking both sides. So, going to first gear at every T-junction, there's, there's no simple answer. It entirely depends on the junction. You know, if you check out that video, though, you'll see where you should be going to first gear at certain junctions, okay? Um, Phil Hall, I'll be coming back to Phil Hall in a sec. A few more announcements then, folks. Um, so, where did I stop? Did I mention, I don't know if I mentioned the NCT. Um, I don't think I mentioned the NCT previously. So, uh, the, the third web address over there, www.nctsie means National Car Testing Service.ie. So, briefly on that, that's... Um, ongoing that's deemed an essential service so you can still attend for an nct appointment for your car as normal whether you're an essential worker or not and if you if you have to travel outside the five kilometer restriction that's absolutely fine if you're getting an nct i'm sure you'll have your documents with you so if you're stopped by the guards they'll be able to look at that and you can explain that you're going to the nct it's deemed an essential service and they are being carried out as normal i had an nct a while ago there um and i came in um you know it was all social distancing was was good in the queue you couldn't you, you're not able to stay inside i mean if you're if the the waiting area is closed so you can't wait inside in the waiting area you have to go outside which is fine i just went for a walk anyway um and that was all was all done very efficiently um so it is an essential service carried on as normal all nct's um have a four month extension so if your nct is it's gone out of date in say September. Um, you know, you it will be extended um up until four months after that, which is uh, January, I think. Um the the records have been updated, so they'll they'll know that and the same with the driving test. The driving testers will know that if you're if the NCT has a four month extension, you don't have to say anything to them. The driving testers will know if you come up to your driving test without a valid NCT disc. If it's, as long as it's only four four months or less out of date, you'll be fine. And car registered on or after the first of the eighth, twenty sixteen, uh, are not eligible for an extension. Okay, so if your if your car has been registered on or after the first of August, twenty sixteen, not eligible for an extension because that's only just barely four four years old. There, you see. Okay, then, folks. So we'll be coming on to some other COVID things in a minute. Let's get back to Phil here, then. So Phil Hall, any tips on parallel parking? I'm the worst at it, and it's getting I'm getting a bit flustered. Yeah. You know, Phil, I, I I keep meaning to make a video on parallel parking. I think I have a great way of explaining it. Um, it's just it's the kind of video that's going to take a fair bit of editing and a fair bit of uh, filming. I think the way the way I want to do it, I am hoping to do it. Um, very soon. Um, practice is key anyway. I would advise you first of all to, to try and practice in a nice quiet area. Um, you know there there's. There is a steering technique, but I I do hope to like. For example, like if you're if you're parallel parking, you have to have your you have to pick your points. You see, so you have to know when to turn. So if you have to pick a certain point on the car. So for example, when your front say your front door handle, for example, gets level with the say the back wheel of the other of the park car, for example, that's usually a give or take. I mean, maybe slight might need to adjust a little bit, but that's usually a good time. To give the first turn okay um but 
yeah, you know, so it's, it's difficult. I, I could I could talk all day about that. I will. I do hope to make a video on parallel parking. I understand what you're saying. Um, if you Google it though, if you if you search into YouTube, you may find some good good videos on it. There's a good good YouTube channel called Advanced. Um, what's it called again? Advanced Driving School. I think they're they're based in England. Um, and there's another. I'm sure you'll find a few as well. I, I think if you, if you just YouTube it, Phil, you'll, you'll, you'll find some good videos on that. But I do hope to make one soon, and it's, it's, it's certainly a, a very good question. Kieran Lennon, hi Dan, doing my test soon. Just wanted to know, how do I pass a car when it is parking? Do I have to let it park fully before I move past it, or can I overtake it if it's safe to do so? So Kieran, this is the classic case of not focusing too much on what the car is doing the park car okay so let's say you have a car in front of you okay and that car is as you explained it um trying to park isn't that what you said he's trying to park so if that's the case you 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 only need to be aware of the car that is parking to a certain extent okay to a certain extent you also have to be incredibly aware of what is coming towards you okay so is there any cars coming towards you you also have to be incredibly aware of how um how wide the road is like how like do you have room to overtake so you have to think of those three things okay so you have to be kind of thinking nearly like three things at once like what the parked car is doing how wide the road is and is there any oncoming cars and you have to make a judgment there if you do feel it is safe and it's a wide enough road and there's no oncoming cars you should be able to overtake that then the tester will probably think you're doing a good thing you're being decisive and you're not being over cautious on the other hand if it's a narrow road and there's a big truck coming towards you you don't want to do anything there then you want to kind of stay a bit further back let the situation develop and very often just letting the situation develop allows the situation to resolve itself also as well Keep an eye on the angle of the car. So if, if the car that is parking is kind of, you know, if he looks like he's, you know, turned the wheel a lot and, he, and he's kind of swinging out and in and all that, just, just be careful there as well on that. But it does depend on the situation. So I hope that helps. I have videos on hazards as well. Um, as long as you slow down early and gradually and be aware of other things, not just the target, not just the, park, not just the car parking, you should be fine. Last thing I'll say on that, Kieran, is if it is... Like if if it if if you are genuinely confused and stuck, usually I'll I'll say usually the best thing in situations like that is to be just err on the side of caution because the worst that could happen to you if you're a bit cautious is you might lose a mark for being cautious, but the worst that could happen to you if you're a bit uh dramatic and you try and overtake someone is you could get a grade three then. So I would say to you overtake if you're if it's safe and you're confident and you can be decisive do it because that's that's going to look great um, but remember just weigh it up you know the worst thing that can happen to you if you're cautious is you're over cautious the worst thing that can happen to you if you overtake badly is well you know great tree so just bear it in mind it does depend on the situation johnson joy hi dan i'm a healthcare worker i have just started my driving classes um, but I am not able to continue with it because of the level five restrictions. Do I have any chances to continue with my lessons? Um, I don't think so there, Johnson Joy, because you've only started, you see, so it's it's not the same category as somebody who's uh, doing a test. So the advice to driving instructors is that we can do uh, continue to do lessons uh, as long as it's with somebody who is an essential worker in and, and who has a driving test coming up okay so it's it's not really designed to for people who are learning like yourself the current restrictions unfortunately we will you will be able to do it after six weeks hopefully but i understand what you're saying and sorry for the inconvenience that it's going to cause you but our advice as instructors is to focus on people who are essential workers and have a, a, a test date already coming up but best of luck to you johnson and uh you know, I hope everything goes well to you. Goes well for you. Um, you know, healthcare workers are such a such a crucial part of society now at the moment, and always have been, and always will be. Junad Riaz, hi then. I'm an essential worker. I booked the test already, but I haven't got my test date yet. 
Should I email urgent driving test at RSA? Yes, I think that would be a good idea, Junad Riaz, because I'll say something to you now that I haven't said before. If you are an essential worker, um, whether it's in health or retail or manufacturing or whatever the, the various descriptions, and you haven't got a test and you want to do your test, well, let's face it, folks, now is the time to do it, okay? Now is the time because they look like they are making their resources available for people exactly like you junad riaz so if you want to do a test yeah you're an essential worker you want to get it done and dusted and hopefully you'll pass with a bit of luck i would email that email address urgent driving test at rsa.ie and let me know how you get on best of luck to you imelda cahill sorry just lost that there now i'll get back to that now imelda cahill where's that gone um here we go so uh melda has a driving test 26th of november would i have what what would i have to practice to pass my driving test well melda in my game that's what we call an open question a question with so many different answers um i could spend the next half hour here melda talking to you about what you'd have to practice uh but, you know, I probably don't have that length of time. So I would say to you, Melda, make sure you get professional driving lessons from a driving instructor in your local area where you're going to do the test. Be familiar with your car. Be familiar with the test route. I have loads of videos to help you pass your driving test, all freely available here on YouTube. Um, practice is, is my best advice to you. Listen to your driving instructor. Look over your routes of the road know your theory know your road signs and if you have any questions just let me know but remember practice makes perfect neve brosnan hi then i just got a time for my driving test eight twenty five in the morning but will this collide with school starting around that time is that bad will it make it harder neve brosnan well you know it's it probably it probably going to be busier neve but I'm a big believer in the following phrase. Like, if you're going to pass your test, you're going to pass it. If you're a good driver, you're a good driver in any conditions, whether it's rain, sunshine, snow, whatever like that. So I would just uh, say to you that there's, um, there's there's good and bad to that time, okay? The good, thing, the good thing about that time, the thing I always love about that time is you get it over with. You get it over with. Uh, virtually first thing in the morning so you're not thinking about the test for the whole day like I mean if you had a test at half four or something like that or, or three o'clock you'd probably be thinking about the whole day you be could be worrying or stressing about it but when, when is that and I know you'll probably be stressed about it the night before like but if you can get a good night's sleep get up nice and early in the morning maybe you get a bit of practice get a lesson beforehand if you can have a good breakfast eat your flavins porridge and all that stuff you are probably you know I think the mind is fresher in the morning I think most people are more focused in the morning time um you can get it over with early and ho and hopefully it'll be good news and enjoy your day then uh yeah it's probably going to be a bit, bit busier i know where i am in wexford the test center is literally across the road from a huge school and it is tricky enough to get out at that time but the other advantage of that is if you have like a lot of cars queuing up okay what, what you're going to be doing then at least for a certain period of time you're going to be in kind of slow moving traffic so that means you've got a better uh you've got better opportunities to scan ahead to think ahead you know because everything will probably be happening slower and you're going to be going slower in queues so that means you're able to see things better you're able to plan ahead better and uh you know that's that's one advantage to it but yeah listen at the time is 8 25 there's not much you can do and even i mean it's, it's good that you have a test uh you just have to roll with it um one other thing i'd say there neve i if i'm I would always try, if I'm giving lessons to somebody, I'd always try and do the lessons at the same time as the test. So, for example, if you have a test at 8.25, I would try in in, in, in the past to, to do at least one lesson at that exact time. Say, I would say 8.30, because by the time you get out, it'll probably be 8, 8.35 or whatever, or even 8.40. So I would always try and do a lesson at around the same time as a test to try and replicate the conditions and the traffic flow, okay? But just remember that like, very often by the time you actually get out, it could be it could be like 12 or it could be 8, 8.40, whatever like that. And you, you might find that the, the traffic is, is kind of beginning to kind of ease a little bit as, as people get more into school. But 
The tester will do will do a lot of routes, which he'll 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 he's not going to want to get stuck in traffic the whole time as well. He'll bring in different places as well that will you know be quieter, so he he'll he or she will will get a mixture of different roads in with you. You won't you won't be kind of constantly stuck in traffic there. But the best look to you, Neve. Let me know how you get on. Aisha Ali, hi Dane. Just a word of thanks. Really enjoying your videos and thank you for the great work you put in. Gurv Mila Magad, I was told to Well, Gurv Mila Magad, it's time time fear of week date. Uh, tattoo Kinalta. Um, I was Kenyari lat. So well done, uh, Aisha. Thanks for that comment. Uh, it's my pleasure to help. And uh, best of luck to you with your driving. And well done on the Irish. Uh, Smashy Rashi again. How could you forget that name now in all fairness? Would you agree that there are some unfair testers out there? Or do you think that we all pass if you deserve to pass? Yeah, well, there's an interesting comment. You see, Smashy Rashi, me old flower. <clears throat> Everybody's different, you see. Everybody, like, you're going to have certain testers that might come across as being unfair you might have certain tests that come across as being a bit gruff and a bit ignorant but i in my experience the vast 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 majority of them are absolutely fine very professional it's just it's just the bad ones will always stick in the head you know you'll always remember the bad ones but uh trust me without without getting too deep into it just trust me on this if you're good enough to pass you will pass your test if you're not good enough well then you won't pass with a with a fair tester or an unfair tester, you know. But because there's because the vast majority of testers are absolutely fine, the ninety nine percent of them are hundred percent a one. Um, because the majority of testers are are decent, good people, you are going to eventually come across a decent tester, you know. Um, I always say, the harder you work at driving, the the more you practice, the more the more work you put in the luckier you get. So make your own look there by practicing, putting the work in, and don't worry too much about conspiracy theories because you're, you're going up a dead end with that. Uh, but good luck to you anyway, Smashy. Canara Keane again, should you indicate when reversing around the corner? You know, it's an interesting question. I used to always say to people, and you'll notice in my early early, early videos on YouTube before this year, say, I would always, always say there's no need to indicate. There's no need. Because the reversing light is coming on anyway, uh, and mo most cars will have two reversing lights actually. And by leaving the indicator on, you know, I have seen people kind of leave it on, and then when they go to move off after the reverse is over, they go to move off, they, they end up, they're probably so uh, focused on doing the corner that they, they hear the tick tock sound and they have to leave the left indicator on and instead of changing it to right. So I, I used to always say to people, no, don't, don't bother indicating this, it's not, not a big deal. Uh, but lately I've been kind of saying to him, just leave leave the left indicator on at least until you, you get most of the way around and until you start turning. But the honest answer is there, there's no one uh, special rule on that. I wouldn't lose uh, too much sleep over it. Um, whether you do or you don't indicate, or it, it, whether you do or don't indicate, it's not a big deal. Um, it's not going to be the be all and end all. Um, remember your reversing lights come on anyway. The most important thing about reversing around a corner is that you do it nice and slow. You show good observation, that means don't stare in the left side mirror the whole time. And you watch out for people coming uh, behind you over both your shoulders. Okay, so the best luck to you there on that, uh, Kanira. Mona Kali. Hi, can I drive automatic license gear car? Can I drive automatic license gear, gear car? I think that's what you're saying. Yes, you can. Can you drive an automatic license gear car? I think, Mona, you're going to have to rephrase that in a way that I can understand it. Uh, you can you can do your test in an automatic if you want. You can do your test in a manual. You can use your own car. You can use the driving instructor's car. Not the driving tester's car. I, one thing I've noticed since I started this job, there seems to be a bit of confusion with people about what a driving tester is and what a driving instructor. A driving, a driving instructor is like me, the person who teaches you how to drive. A driving tester is the government employee uh, who examines you and who carries out the tests and tells you if you passed or failed. Okay, so just just so, just to clarify that, if you pass in an automatic, you're only licensed to drive automatic. Okay, if you pass in a manual, you can subsequently drive manual and automatic. But Mona, I'm not really understanding your comments, so feel free to say it again uh, in a way that I can understand it better. Uh, Jenny, again, what's the cheapest? <laughs> What's the cheapest insurance quote you have heard a learner get most expensive? 
God, um, I've heard learners get, I've, I've seen someone get it for, I don't know, 7 or 800, and I've heard some wild quotes of three or 4,000. I've heard some quotes that are even more expensive than, than, than the car would be, which is completely mad, you know. Um, I know Aviva has some great um, offers as well there, but you have to go to an Aviva driving school to, to do that. I think you might get, what is that? You might get six months free or something like that, six months free insurance. So with Aviva and AXA as well, AXA are connected with the Irish School of Motoring. But in order to do all that, you, you have to go to a, a an Aviva driving school or an AXA driving school connected with the ISM. Um, the industry changes, Jenny. You know, some you, you hear some horror stories, but you know, with with, with Aviva, you, you hear some really good stories as well. Um, but I suppose the cheapest I've heard, I've heard people get it for six or seven hundred. And as I said, I've heard some mad ones, three or four grand, which some case was was nearly twice as expensive as the car. Uh, the best advice there: shop around, shop around, ring as many as you can, contact as many as you can, um, and hopefully that way you'll get the best price possible. Uh, so another comment or two, folks, and um, I'll get back to a few announcements here. Uh, so that was Jenny. So let's see, J- Jin's Thomas here, and I'll, I'll just go to some some announcements in my book here. Sorry, I missed the initial part of the streaming. Well, that's okay. You can you can watch back later if you wish. My driving test is scheduled for the eighteenth of November. Will that be rescheduled since I'm not a health or retail worker? Well, Jins Thomas, they are not going to reschedule it for you. They're not going to quiz you. They don't know what your job status is. They want to leave it up to you to decide that. You have to decide there. If you're not an essential worker, as you say you're not, isn't that really? Did you say that? Um, and you're, if you're not an essential health or retail worker, it's, it's not just health and retail, by the way. There's other areas as well. There's like just manufacturing as, as well. You, you, there's a list on, if you go to www.gov.ie or just Google essential workers, Ireland, you, you'll be able to see a, a long list of other essential workers. So, Jins, it's up to you to decide there. Uh, what you should do there is you should cancel your test uh, as soon as possible so that an essential worker can avail of your uh, test slot that would be the proper thing to do but at the end of the day they are leaving it up to you to decide okay but listen if you are going to cancel do it as soon as possible don't don't leave it till the week beforehand don't just the sooner you do it the better and that way somebody else can take your slot and they will have more time to prepare for the driving test then but um thanks for that comment anyway jins now Speaking of driving tests then, so folks, I know I'm probably stating the obvious here, but if you have any symptoms of COVID-19, don't attend your driving test. Contact the RSA, let them know that you're not going to attend. If you are awaiting results of a COVID test, do not attempt to do your driving test. If you are self-isolating, don't do a driving test. Contact the RSA, let them know about the situation. You won't lose your fee for any of these things. You will not lose your fee your your test will just be rearranged for another time okay free of charge if you're turning up for a driving test make sure that your car is clean clean and tidy inside and out make sure your windows are nice and clean get a bit of window lean and and scrub those windows so you've got a good view of the front back and side uh windows make sure that there's no uh face masks lying on the dashboard or lying you know, underneath your handbrake, as I as I see, as I seem to see it all the time now, looking inside cars. Make sure there's no tissues, there's no rubbish, there's no like your car should be nice and clean before you do a driving test. Okay, the tester will probably have wipes anyway, where he'll be wiping down certain like surfaces or door handles or the seat adjuster and that kind of thing as well. Uh, no handshaking policy, as you can probably imagine. The driving tester will not be doing any handshakes with you. Um, make sure you have your phone with you. If you're doing a driving test uh, over the next few weeks, as, as we are involved in the COVID restrictions, make sure you have your phone, uh, that the phone number that you applied uh, for the test with. More than likely, the driving tester is going to give you a call as you're waiting in the, in the car park to tell you that he's ready and that he will then subsequently let you into the test centre. So make sure you have your phone near to you. Expect a call if your driving test is, is taking place. Um... Of course, you'll have to wash your hands uh, with sanitizer in the test center. Um, they were they are going to give you a face mask as well. If you can't wear a face mask, you have to let them know. Uh, in all likelihood, there's not going to be a driving test if you can't wear a face mask. Okay. Um, 
so that there are some of the announcements there to do with the uh, with the driving test. Like apart from apart from all that and apart from extra sanitizing, the driving test is essentially the same as it was before. Now the driving tester, um, excuse me, may well step outside the car while you're doing your reverse around the corner. Now not not all of the not all testers do that. By the way, it depends on the tester. That's so you, he doesn't come in close contact with you as you're turning around to do your observation. So it's possible possible that the driving tester will step outside go up on the grass or or whatever and observe you doing the reverse around the corner from outside the car the same way he'll ask you someone checks uh, outside the car as well so previously they would have asked you to do or they would have asked you about some of the checks like the the heaters or the wipers or how to how to use the um demisters things like that as they're sitting in the passenger seat now that's going to be done while they're standing outside the car Okay, but apart from that, it's more uh, apart from that, and the uh, you know the extra sanitizing and face mask is more or less the same thing there. Then I don't think that the length of it has changed anyway. To the best of my knowledge, people still are still at roughly the same length of time. Okay, then so I'll come. I'll come back to a few more announcements on um unaccompanied learners in a minute. So we're going to be talking about that the punishment for unaccompanied drivers and reduced EDT if you have a foreign license. But let's get back to some comments anyway um so let me see what was the last one i did jins thomas wasn't it um canara keen if you fail what's the soonest date you can reapply oh good question um usually two weeks i think um so that that's what the norm is. I I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I think it's two weeks. I don't think like if you fail a test, I don't think you can come back like in a few days and do it again. I think it's either ten days or two weeks, uh, Canera. But that's one that I should actually need to. I should uh, clarify myself to see if that's changed from before. I know it used to be two weeks, but uh, just say two weeks anyway. But the best of luck, Canera, if you're if you're waiting on a test, Nigel, X I or ten, whatever that Roman numeral number is, or nine, whatever it is. Do you consider a say it beats a two thousand and ten model a small car? Um, do I even know what is what's a say it beats a? Is that about the same size as an Opel Corsa? Is it? Say it beats a. I think that's a that's a kind of a small to medium sized car. To, if to the best of my, I wouldn't be well up on the say it's to be honest there, Nigel. So sorry about that. But if it's roughly the same size as a Corsa or a Fiesta or something like that, I think that's a kind of a average to small car then, yeah um so courtney o'keefe hi then great content on here thank you will the tester know if this is our first second third attempt etc at the driving test if it is our first attempt will they be more like <laughs> if it is our first attempt will they be more likely to fail us thanks courtney thanks for tuning in uh you're very welcome thanks for your comment good interesting question let's deal with the first one Will the tester know if it's your first, second, third attempt? No. They don't have any knowledge that it's your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, twentieth attempt. No. The only way they might know that is if they've kind of seen you around before at the test center. So they maybe they tested you before or maybe they, their uh, colleague tested you before and they might remember your face from the test center. But apart from that, they're not going to know if it's your first, second, third or whatever test. No. No. They're, look, they're not going to care. They, they, they just have like whatever it is, eight or ten people to test that day. They, they don't really care too much whether it's your first, second, third. They just want to. Their job is to analyze you, uh, to 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 test your driving skills and to give you good feedback. Okay, and then your next question was, will they be more likely to fail us? If it's our first attempt, will they be more likely to fail us? Uh, no, no, not at all, Courtney. If if you fail, it's because you're not quite at the required standard, okay? It's nothing to do whether it's your first, second, third, fourth, fifth attempt, okay? I've, I've given people lessons and they've been, they've under fifth or sixth attempt and sometimes they've, they've done a worse test under fifth attempt than they've done under second attempt, you know? Um, and a lot of that could be to do with nerves, a lot of it could be to do with the route, um, you know, busier times, etc. like that. But listen, the harder you work, the more you practice, uh, the more lessons you get, etc., the luckier you'll be and the more likely you'll be. So just remember that. The harder you work, the luckier you'll be. Not just at driving, but I think at everything in life. Uh, but thanks for that comment anyway, Courtney. Uh, John W. I then love the videos. If I stop at a roundabout or a yield sign, just to be sure, 
and to give myself some extra time. Be careful there now, John Mayo Flower. Don't be driving like it's a Sunday a Sunday now. Um, even if there's no traffic coming, will that be looked upon negatively in the test? So, um, you need to be careful there, John. You don't want to be uh, coming across as being too hesitant or too slow. I would not advise you to be stopping and, you know, taking extra time. Um, by all means, do so if it's a difficult junction, if it's a blind junction. You know, if 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 it's if it's busy and blind, and you don't have a great view from from you know, like as you're approaching, you're 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 blinded by a wall or something like that. Or you're blinded by a hedge or trees. Certainly, then be careful. Maybe stop. Maybe maybe creep up, but uh, do not get into the habit of stopping at every single yield sign as a way of putting on some show to the tester that you're just you're just careful driver. Because take it from me, John. There's nothing in this world that drives testers more mad than drivers who are being over cautious and who are being too careful and too hesitant okay the te driving tester wants to see a good confident decisive driver making decisions based on the junction and based on the roundabout not making these silly uh like one, one size fits all decisions that that doesn't doesn't suit every junction okay so just be very careful there john if it's if the junction is safe and you, you know you can you can go a little bit quicker well then you should do so provided it's safe and if the junction is a little bit trickier a little more difficult well then take your time there yeah hang the dj 16 hi dan thanks for all your great videos my pleasure if i choose to use my instructor's car for the test am i fully insured on his insurance on his insurance policy well unless he's some kind of gangster yes you are hang on let me just come up for losing that there now one sec um where are we here we go yeah so if you use your instructor's car you should be insured on his policy like I, I i have a driving instructor's policy with first ireland so i'm i'm insured to drive it for personal use and any learners for learning and during the test so yeah there should be no problem there hang the dj 16 as long as your driving instructor has a valid policy and a driving instructor's policy uh there should be no problem. You you you'll sign a form anyway beforehand to say that you're insured. Uh, it's kind of like a disclaimer at the at the start of the test. Okay, so you you will say sign a form once you're in the test center with the tester there. But yeah, if if, if I mean, I mean, if you have any questions about that, hang the DJ. You're probably better off asking your own instructor. But I I assume there should be no problem though. Um. G G Jakutis, a hundred thousand subscribers in two years. Then if you keep it well, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I'm up to twenty seven or something now, or twenty eight. I, I forget now, but yeah, thanks for that. I ho hopefully so. We'll see how it goes. See how long I see how long I can keep at this. Michael Penka, wish me good luck. Then I have my test on Wednesday at half one in Sligo. Sligo is Schligoch in Irish, and that means Shelley Place, famous for a shellfish. As we say, ask well, get there, Michael. Good night, lad. Best of luck with your test in Sligo. Best of luck. Hope you do it. Let me know how you get on. Uh, Jins Thomas booked it on August the tenth. Okay. Oh yes, Jins was talking to me before there um, about the, the test, and then Nigel there as well. Yeah. Okay. Um. So next then, Smashy Rashi again. Michael Penko, I will be there to watch. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um. One or two more comments there, folks, and then I'll get onto a few announcements here again. Um. Uh, quart, quart, quartzin, quartzin. I think it is. Hi, Dan. Which are the sections where you see most students slipping up most during a test? Um, it's not. It's just. It's it's a, a variety, really. A lot of people fall down in observation, for example, like not moving the head enough. And position as well, position and hazards, I think, are, are three that, that come to mind straight away. Like, like a lot of people, I find a lot of people drive too close to the centre of the road. Like, they're not they're not keeping left of centre. Um, you know, you can use your side mirror as a guide there. So you, you can use your left side mirror and try have your door handle kind of close to the edges. That's, that can help you there. But I would say observation, like not moving the head enough, not getting the one last look. So, like, if you're coming out of a junction... You have to make sure you keep the head moving, like say a stop sign T junction. Keep the head moving left, right, left, right. And if you're going, say, if you're going left, so if you're going left, make sure you get one last look to the right, kind of as you're crossing the line. But 
there, there wouldn't be any one particular area like it's just those three like like hazards park cars like you know deal, dealing with obstructions and park cars is, causes a few issues as well it's getting close to park not you, you know not not moving out not giving a meter door length those type of things but it, it does it does depend on the person mostly people are just if people fail it's it's, it's not necess- it's not always down to what like uh hazards or position or or signs or something it's not really all down to that it's 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 down more to themselves and not practicing not getting enough lessons not taking the thing seriously you know uh some people uh, just don't take it as seriously as others so if you if you prepare if you uh put the work in if you get the lessons you have a great chance i suppose to answer your question most people fail because they don't do enough preparation um but it does depend, you know, if everyone's different. And every test route is different as well. You know, like, Wexford has a few tight streets, um, a few Viking streets. Um, other areas may have more hills. Like, you know, it, it all depends on the it depends on the person and depends on the location. But they that'll be my general answer there anyway. Um, let me see now. I'm just going to get my comments back here. So here we go. Um, Ray, is it Ray Ray? Um, yeah. Ray Ray, hi Dana, managed to get a cancellation in two weeks, that's great news. How do I avoid a slight jerk when downshifting from fourth to second? Uh, very simply, Ray Ray, uh, by doing what I'm about to sell you. So first of all, don't go from fourth to second too early, okay? If you go from fourth to second too early, the car's not going to be ready for second gear and you're going to get a bit of a jerk and a jump. Okay. Second thing, as you're going from fourth to second, keep your foot on the brake at least a little bit if you're on the flat and definitely on the downhill. Okay. Keeping your foot on the brake as you're going from fourth to second helps keep the car smooth. And also, as well, uh, don't come off the clutch so quick. Okay. So now maybe you're not coming off the clutch so quick, but but just especially for the upper part. So when you're when you go from fourth to second, okay. You have to come off the clutch then because if you don't, you're coasting and it's going to be a big fault. So as you're coming off the clutch, try lifting your clutch very, very slow. Okay, Because if you come off off the clutch too quick, the car is more likely to jerk and jump. Okay, So hopefully they'll help you there, Ray Ray, and the best luck to you. Can you hear keen then? Um, How long does the actual driving part of the test take? um it can take about 30 minutes 35 minutes it can depend on traffic you know sometimes a little bit less sometimes a little bit more but you're talking give or take about half an hour there Kanira. and how many theory signs questions are right you see it depends on the tester um they, they don't have a, a a specific number of signs or questions that they'll ask you maybe, maybe four or five each you know some some testers might ask more uh some might ask less so you're talking roughly half an hour of driving and approximately four or five uh, sign four or five questions and maybe four or five or six signs. Okay, it does depend on the tester, but that would be a that would be a rough guide anyway. Okay, then folks. So let's see on a company drivers. Then okay, I, people are asking me a lot about about this in the comment section of YouTube. Um, I'm sure it's not a revelation to say to you now. If you're driving on a company, it's against the law and you shouldn't be doing it. It doesn't matter if you live out the country and you're you're twenty kilometers from civilization. It doesn't matter if you're going in and you're working as a brain surgeon in the matter. It doesn't matter if you're a student or whatever like that and you live, you know, 20 kilometers from your college. If you're driving on a company, it's illegal no matter what your situation is or no matter what your dad does for a living or anything like that. Okay, so let's just go through the the main the main um, uh, punishments, I suppose. So. Since um, 2018, I think it was the end of 2018, I think the, the, the law was upgraded. If you're driving on a company, you, are, you do risk having your vehicle being impounded, okay? That means they'll take the vehicle away from you, okay? And you'll have to then pay to get it back, okay? You all, all also risk getting points and a fine, okay? So the the points vary. So you if you... If you um, don't contest it, say, for example, you will be liable for two um, penalty points, two penalty points and an 80 euro fine. OK, it's a, that's if it's paid within 28 days. However, if it goes to court and you're found guilty, um, which presumably you will be, um, you are then liable to four penalty points. OK, 
four penalty points and a 120 euro fine okay all that in addition to having to probably having the car impounded as well before all that okay so um if you pay within 28 days two penalty points and an 80 euro fine if it goes to court four penalty points and a 120 euro fine um if you are driving a car uh, unaccompanied and you are not the owner of the car then the owner uh, could be prosecuted as well up to they could possibly get a fine of up to 1000 euro so in that way the owner is of the car is uh, getting prosecuted there um, please note this does not apply to motorbikes or tractors though okay they are exempt from from these rules okay so basically folks what i'm saying is it, it doesn't matter what what you're doing it doesn't matter about your your story or your your excuse or anything like that if you're driving unaccompanied it's against the law doesn't matter why you're driving it doesn't matter about the politics of it doesn't matter about the weight in this it's against the law okay so you need to be very very careful there you 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 are leaving yourself completely open there to being prosecuted by the law and just to, just to be aware of that okay so you can get fine get penalty points and uh, just be careful okay so let's get back to a few comments then and then we'll be talking about reduced edt because certain people are able to do the uh, less than the 12 lessons let's say that they can do six lessons but i'll get to that in a few moments just want to catch up on some comments here and what time are we at here now folks it's quarter past one um probably be going to about maybe half one or 20 to two okay so probably staying live for another 15 20 minutes if you have any questions get them in there now okay so uh let me see let me try and catch up on the comments then um so i think i had ray ray last was it oh no i had canara there last uh colomo doing colomo doing um hi then found your just found your channel now good good to have you column um where have you been for the last two years i was wondering how long would it take to actually start driving if i take my theory test in January well Callum that is a good question and the first answer is I probably don't know so if you do your theory test in January okay after you do your theory test you will also I mean you, you have you have to get an eyesight report to say that your eyesight is is in good shape Um, you have to fill out the form and you'll have to go and apply to the NDLS uh, center to to uh, get your learner's permit so that could all take a number of weeks okay so if you if you can get all that done by the end of january you'll be doing well i think and then you can start your lesson say for example in february and um what was the question actually for how long will it take to actually start driving so yeah start driving yeah so basically i mean you have to make sure you book the theory test you do and pass the theory test okay you have to get 35 out of 40 at least in that then you have to get an eyesight report make sure everything is okay there then you have to go and apply for the actual um, learner's permit in your the nearest NDLS center. Uh, there could be a bit of a backlog, you see, for the for the theory test, and there could be a backlog for the NDLS because they're kind of prioritizing essential workers and you know whatever that's that's been going on. So if you have your theory test in January, you would be doing very well to get on the road in February. Okay. Um, I don't really know. See, it depends on how big the backlog will be by that stage. Um, it depends if they're going to take on extra staff, run extra tests, uh, you know. But that's my my opinion anyway. It's hard to say for sure, though. But good luck to you anyway, Callum. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll be making loads of videos here anyway. And I have loads of videos um, to help you on your on your journey. Niall, any advice for test nerves? Yeah. Um, so I've made a video on this actually as well. Uh, so if you type into YouTube Dane Thai uh, driving test nerves or something, my video should come up there on top. Um, if you're nervous, that means that you're taking this thing seriously and it means a lot to you. So that's a good that's a good thing. Nerves also mean that you're probably going to be more focused. Okay, you're 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 probably going to concentrate more. Because your 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 mind is tuned into the event that's making you nervous. Okay, so that's that's two good things about that. The other thing, nerves are usually worse in the lead up to the test. Let's say, so they might be bad the day before. They're probably going to be bad the morning of the test, and particularly that in the hour or two beforehand, and probably peaking when you're actually in the waiting room. But trust me, they will ease as you start a test, as you start, um, as you start 
driving and as you start doing it um it's kind of like that um like if you, if you do a if you do a skydive it's, it's the, the lead up to the skydive is like just torturous nerves probably not, not that i've ever i would never have the courage to do a skydive like but from what i hear from people who are uh, who have done it the lead up is like nerve wracking but then once you actually jump out of the plane and you're floating in the air it's like heaven do you know what i mean now i'm not saying the driving test is like heaven but uh, i would say that the lead up is worse once you start driving you, you're not really that nervous because you're, you're too busy concentrating on what the tester says um but yeah a few deep breaths you know always remember the worst thing the things you worry about most in life probably don't happen anyway and uh so as i said in some ways nerves can be good because they mean you're going to focus but the best of luck now let me know how you get on now let's see where else we are here a couple more comments then we'll get back to the reduced edt and we'll be finished up maybe in 15 minutes connor lally dane dane hello dane is it possible to register for a learner's permit online if you can submit proof of uh theory test results and eye test results i don't think so connor i think the rsa are wanting to make that process um more user friendly and enhance the online applications in the future but i think that's more for full licenses um at the moment i don't think you can register online for a learner's permit no so sorry about that um but uh, for more for the best most up-to-date information connor the website on, on, on screen there, the middle one, www.ndls.ie, okay? That's the National Driving Licensing Service. Check out their website for, for information on that. Uh, great website, um, with lots of up-to-date information, okay? And best of luck to you, Connor. Killian Harford, what's the most efficient way to study for theory test? Probably by doing practice theory tests, Killian, as opposed to getting your head stuck in a book for hours on end where you're probably not even going to concentrate. So you can get this um, kind of like a CD-ROM, um, stick that CD into the computer, and then you can do kind of practice exams. You can buy it in any bookshop or anything like that. You, you just, uh, what's it called? Driver theory test, it's called. And they'll often be stocked in the, book sh in the bookshops just beside the theory test book. Okay, so I would definitely recommend that that's a far better way to prepare for the theory test by doing practice exams with the with the official uh, CD-ROM. And the best luck to you, Killian. Emily um, Anderson, hi, Dane. Any tips? I can't seem to get the hang of the three-point turn without crossing my hands. My test's very soon, and I'm feeling nervous. This is my second attempt. I have another question. That's my biggest. So on crossing the hands, yeah, um okay so first of all practice okay you're going to have to practice proper steering uh on that um oh got, got another donation there from jordan quinlevin i'll get down to you in a sec there jordan and thank you very much for that kind donation 17 euro really appreciate that and uh, just getting back to my question there on on uh the turnabout now sorry i was going to find that sometimes the comments go a little bit haywire um let me see it was emily wasn't it let me just find that comment there again so yeah i had this i had over the years i've had a, f a few people who have had a little bit of difficulty with crossing the hands on the on the turnabout so what i did with with them emily was i brought them to a nice quiet car park nice open area nice nice open car park with no or very few cars around and we just literally went around the car park uh, uh turning the wheel left turning the wheel right doing figures of eights if you know like turning going in and out of uh, light poles and stuff like that um because it's you're you're better off not crossing the hands because um it's 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 a it's basically a bad habit and I would advise you to go to a quiet area, practice as much as you can with the steering. Um, I would advise you first of all, um, in the in the quiet car park to kind of start off with with kind of um can you see my hands? I don't know if you can see this, but anyway, to start off with kind of gentle turns like that. So if you're turning left, just kind of like like that kind of like on like on a more gradual turn and then maybe do that until you're used to that and then maybe go on a little bit more sharper turns where it involves sharper turning and build it up that way so my advice to you there would be to practice 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 go to a quiet area don't there, there, there's no point in trying to fix this when you're in a pressurized environment of doing a turnabout whether it's in practice or whatever like that yeah step back go to a quiet area do the donkey work get the basics done there 
and then you can implement that then hopefully in the turnabout. I have some great videos on turnabouts as well, Emily. Uh, so just check out Dane Tide Turnabout um, and you'll, you'll, you'll get some advice and tips there. Um, Kevin Tyrrell, minimum 21 days for a retail. Is it 21? Three weeks. Thanks for Clara. Thank you very much, Kevin, for Clara. I wasn't 100% sure. I thought it was two weeks, but uh, Kevin says three weeks there, so that's, that's good. Thanks for that update there, Kevin Tyrrell. Ruby D. So Kevin was on about the retest there. So if you, he was saying, just to clarify it for anybody who wasn't tuned in earlier, if you fail a test, uh, I thought you had to wait two weeks before you could, uh, but that the soonest you could do a retest would be two weeks. It appears it might be gone up to three weeks, okay? So uh, if you fail a test, the soonest you can get another test appears to be three weeks. Thanks for that update, Kevin. Ruby D, uh, hi then. Do you get a lot of, how do you get a lot of practice if you don't have a qualified a company driver? This has really slowed my progress, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean, Ruby. Uh, it's a tricky one, you know. It's a tricky one. But, you know, you have to be resourceful, okay? You have to be re resourceful. You have to try harder. You have to put either make it... You have to either make it easier for other people to be with you or for you to be with other people. Uh, I know it's difficult now with the whole um, restrictions and all that and... You know, people probably, you know, you, we, we don't want to be kind of uh, getting too close to other people. We want to try and keep our contacts down to a minimum. But, you know, I don't really know, Ruby. That, that's something you have to figure out for yourself. I know it is a bit tricky if you don't have a lot of close contacts or if you don't have a, if you don't have a qualified driver to go with. If you don't really, you don't really have much of a choice, you have to try and see, can I improve my theory? Can I maybe look over, spend time looking over your theory and road signs. Check out some of my my uh, driving lesson videos to help you as well. Um, but I suppose the best way I could answer that is really get more driving lessons. Okay, um, if you if you're having trouble getting in a company driver, the only option is then get more professional driving lessons. You know that's the only thing you can really do. Um, Matt 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 uh, Medium seventy three nice videos. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, live. Live Moo, hi then. Can you drive over ramps in third gear on your test? Yes, there's no. I, I mean, there's no big problem with that. I mean, normally I'd say to people, slow down gradually and do do the ramps in second gear. But like, let's face it, not all not all ramps are the same. Okay, uh, some ramps are going to be a little bit bigger. Some are going to be a bit smaller. I know there's some ramps that um I'd see under. They don't look very big, but they're they're they actually when you actually drive over them, you get this awful big, uh, bump. So, listen, it depends on the ramp, you know, um, I'm not going to sit here and say to you, oh yeah, do every ramp in second gear, you know, because that's just a lazy analysis, it's just, it's just lazy, it doesn't take into account the situation, it doesn't take into account how the ramps are constructed, how big they are, okay? In general, I would say second gear is probably the best because I think it slows it down gradually, but by all means, you can do a ramp in third gear if it's a lower ramp, if it's not as high, if it's not as steep, there should be no problem in third gear, okay? It depends on the wrap. Thanks for that, Livmo. A couple more comments, folks, then we'll get on to reduced EDT. Um, let me see, where are we? Livmo, yeah. Can you target with sorry, got that. Mad Madaim uh, 1973. How can we guess the speed limit if there's no sign? Okay, you have to analyze your surroundings first, okay? Um if you're talking about in a driving test, the chances are the chances are it's going to be a 50 kilometer sign, um, limit, okay? Uh, now, it might be 60 as well, but if you're not sure, and you think you're, 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 if you're in town, okay, you're in some kind of an urban or a residential area or something like that, and you don't notice the speed limit sign, you're probably better off just assuming that it is a 50 kilometer zone, okay? That would be my advice to you. I'd always say try and make a mental note of the road signs because the speed limit road signs, because you, you, you might see a speed limit sign. And you might not see another one for a couple of minutes. So the last one you saw is going to be the, the one that the speed limit is. Uh, you may see another reminder sign as well uh, further on down on your route. But um, I, know it, I know it's tricky. I know it's, it's difficult. I know it can be a bit stressful if you don't know the speed limit. But my advice to you will be the, the simplest thing I could say to you is if you're in a test and you're in town, just assume it's 50k. Okay? So one or two more comments here, folks, before I get on to some announcements. Then I'll come back. 
Um, Finbar Nangle, thanks, Dane. Your YouTube videos really helped me pass my stage two ADI. Oh, ADI test. This guy's going to be an instructor then, by the looks of good. That's great, uh, Finbar. Glad to hear that. Thank you very, very much, and good luck to you on your ADI journey. So it looks like you just have the stage three now, which is the uh, the third stage of the ADI, where you will probably ha you will have to. Uh, do a test with an examiner sitting in the back and a learner beside you and the, the examiner then will will examine how you communicate with the learner driver so that's great delighted to hear that so it's not just for learners as you can see folks congratulations finbar and best of luck to you on your journey jordan quinlevin jordan thank you very much 16 euro 99 cent donation really 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 appreciate that uh, and all the donations so jordan says that he passes test Thursday. Thanks for your help, Dan. Well, Jordan, if you pass your test Thursday, you are a very good driver, and I really appreciate that donation. Thank you so much. And Jordan, congratulations on passing your test. Uh, all you have to do now is book an appointment with the NDLS. Um, so because you pass your test, it, I mean, it depends if you're an essential worker. As I said to you at the start of the stream, they're they're. If you've just passed your test, the NDLS would prefer that you only apply to get your full license in the NDLS if you're an essential worker. So if you are an essential worker, Jordan, go for it. Uh, but thanks again for the donation, Jordan. And well done on passing. It's always a great achievement to pass your driving test. So thank you very much. So I'll come back with the comments in a section second, folks. Um, just some final announcements there then. Just to make sure I have everything. Some people don't have to do the full 12 lessons. So, if you have a full license from another country, a full driver's license from another country, that's not in the EU or the European Economic Area that includes Iceland, uh, Switzerland and Liechtenstein and Norway, I think, as well. So, if you don't have um, a full license, um, sorry, let me, do, let me just rephrase that again, okay? If you have a full license um, from a country that's not in the EU or the European Economic Area, you may be eligible for reduced EDT. That means you only have to do six driving lessons instead of the full 12, okay? So, you must have that full license though in the other, the, the other country that's not recognized. You must have that full license for at least two years, okay? At least two years, okay? And it mustn't um, be due expiry uh, less than six months, okay? So it can't be due to go out of date in under six months. Um, you have to be resident in Ireland and you also have to hold an Irish learner's permit as well, okay? You have to hold an Irish learner permit. That, that Once you have the learner permit, that takes precedence then over the over the foreign license and over the international permit if you have that. Um, so you will have to do six one-hour lessons, half of the regular EDT. And the same rules apply about driving unaccompanied. You're not allowed to drive unaccompanied because, as I said to you a few moments ago, the rules on, on an Irish learner permit will supersede the other uh, full license you have or the international uh, driving permit if you have that okay so and then you you um, won't have to wait six months to apply for a test as well you'll be able to get that sooner okay the international driving permit then so you can drive on an international driving permit in Ireland up to 12 months okay up to 12 months but then once you um, take up residence or like what like once you um, arrive in Ireland let's say you should use that 12 months to begin the process of making your situation more regular okay so that means um, transitioning away from the international driving permit and going through the system of um, EDT or reduced EDT okay um, so once you once you take up residence with your international driving permit you have to then apply for the learner permit and do the EDT and eventually do the full driving test okay as I said, the, the learner permit takes priority. You have to, you can't, you cannot drive on a company, and you have to, you have to put your L plates up on the car, front and back. Red L on the front, red L on the back. Okay. I noticed like a few people in the comments saying to me about now uh, the waiting list and all that I've had. I've, I've been driving on a on an international permit and all this kind of stuff, and the waiting list is too long. Look, I, I, I'm not sure I have a whole lot of sympathy for anyone like that, folks. You know, like if you if you arrived here and you have your international permit, say last year or something, like, say last last November, or whatever like that. I mean, you have a long time. Like one year is a long time to regularize your situation. You know, there's plenty of time to get your permit, 
uh, plenty of time to uh, get your lessons or even reduce the. I mean, you only have to get six lessons, like if if you're eligible for the reduced EDT. I mean, that's that's you know you get them done in a few weeks, like, and then you go for the process of doing tests and all that kind of stuff. So like, if you're on an international permit, you can drive on it up to a year here, but after that, you you have to get yourself sorry. You 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 have to regularize your situation. I think a year is plenty of time, folks. I know in the current COVID restrictions and all that, it's a bit tricky and all that, but uh, a year should be plenty of time to get your situ- get your situation sorted out, okay? Anyway, there are the main announcements, folks. Um, maybe I'll come back to them in future streams. Let's get back to a few more comments here. I'm going to try and catch up my comments then before we before we finish. What time are we at? 12, so maybe I'll keep going for another 10 or 15 minutes. We'll see how we get on, folks. So, um... Jamie Ward, can you practice outside five kilometers on the test route when you have a test date coming up? That's a good question, Jamie. Uh, I'm going to give you two possible answers, okay? My first answer is yes, I think so. Um, because you are, if you are an essential worker and you're doing a test and you're practicing for it, to the best of my knowledge, you don't, you, you don't have to apply by the five kilometer rule. But the second answer is I'm not 100% sure because I haven't seen that specifically mentioned on the RSA website or on any press release okay but I'm going to assume that you can practice yes outside the 5k uh, just you know um, it might be no harm to have some documents which are to say that you have a test coming up or something like that it is a slight little grey area there Jamie Ward but uh, to the best of my knowledge yes you can practice outside the 5k in the same way as you're not uh, you don't apply the, the five kilometer rules don't apply if you're doing your driving test or coming to and from your driving test okay Finbar and angle learn push oh yes learn push and pull steering Emily and just get out of the habit of crossing the hands don't we yes good advice there Finbar uh, as, as Finbar said you have to learn it and you have to practice it Harjev Singe hi Dan failed my test twice sorry to hear that I'm a professional rally driver from India well there's a there's a there's a there's a job and a half isn't it a rally driver from india still in disbelief any tips or is there a quota they fall off for christ's sake um first of all harjev singe i'm sorry to hear you failed um you know it's it's uh it is depressing when that happens okay um you're a rally driver from india well listen congratulations on being a rally driver from india that's not going to matter too much though about your driving test the driving testers are not going to care whether you're a rally driver, whether you're an astronaut, or whether you're an expert at tiddlywinks, okay? The only thing they're going to care about is how are your driving skills, okay? Did you do the proper observation? Did you check your blind spot? All the usual stuff that I, I say in my videos and I, I say in advice from t- to people. Uh, you might be able to drive fast, but are you able to drive properly? That's the key question. Um, I'm sorry you failed, but if you failed, you know, there must be a reason. Um, any tips well practice get professional lessons I mean did you get like you didn't you didn't say if you got lessons like I mean were you chancing your arm or did you get proper lessons off a proper instructor um, quota maybe they have quotas in India and Pakistan and all this kind of stuff I've heard some dodge things about the way they do driving over there but let, let me let me reassure you Harjev there's no quota for failing here it's very very simple okay it's very simple if you are a good enough driver you will pass your test, okay? If you're not good enough, or you haven't prepared properly, or you've made mistakes or whatever, you're not going to pass, okay? It all depends on how you prepare. As I said to you, as I said in a few times in this stream, there's a great phrase I try and live my life by. It's a very simple phrase, and you should probably learn this. The harder you work, the luckier you'll get. Work harder, prepare better, and you might pass your test next time. I hope you do. Uh, the best look next time if you have any questions let me know um if you want to email me your test sheet dantai at gmail.com okay i will go through the test sheet for you uh, in a detailed way and i will link into other videos that will help you so harjev uh let's let's dispel these uh stupid conspiracy theories okay if you want to email me i'll engage with you and i will help you and i'll point you in the right direction but um and if you do, just you can comment on any of my videos, and I'll, I'll, I'll I can get back to you either. Okay, but sorry to hear that, and best of luck next time. Um, Leisha, is that Leisha? What a great name, Leisha. Leisha Brophy. Hi, Dan. Love your videos. Uh, thanks so much for doing them. My pleasure. I'm slightly dyslexic. That's a pity. 
and someone told me to tell the tester this so they will point out the left and right to me absolutely yes is this okay or not as we say ask well get touch is in car lower fiber bit that is absolutely fine no problem uh you can certainly tell the tester that uh, i understand your plight i've done that myself in lessons as well given the old hand signals like left or right whatever like that you see the the tester wants you to be at ease the tester knows that if you're at ease and you're comfortable you're probably going to drive better and he's going to or he or she is going to get a more realistic assessment of your driving so absolutely uh don't be worried don't be ashamed don't be embarrassed just tell the, the test that you're a little bit dyslexic and you might get a bit stressed with the directions i'm i'm sure that the tester will accommodate that and do some hand signals to help you there uh, and the very very best look to you there alicia with your driving if you have any questions just let me know hang the dj 16 would you recommend adi as a career choice yes i would i've been doing it 12 years i don't do it so much anymore i'm only giving lessons to a select few in wexford a very select few um i think it's a great job i've enjoyed it immensely um i would recommend it if that's what you want if you like working for yourself if you like working with people particularly younger people um if you you if you are a patient person um you won't make a million euros with it but you'll you make a good living if you're good anyway and it can certainly take you in different directions as well like like i've learned to kind of develop uh, a youtube following with it as well so yes it is a great career um but you have to want it for yourself and most importantly you have to be patient it's, if you're if you're going to be impatient and you're going to snap and shout at people it's not for you you're better off doing something else uh, but best of luck if you're going to do it uh, good luck to you man united third place trophy winners banter club <laughs> yeah that's a great name yeah uh then i take benzos and do coke regularly do you think it affects driving um i don't know uh do you mean coke as in you drink coke cola or are you are the, the dodgy stuff i'm not really sure uh, not really sure what benzos is and as for coke well you know we all we all make our choice in life uh, it probably would affect the driving i'd imagine yeah mary k hi dan i took my edt lessons in 2012 2013 are they still in date yes absolutely can i take my test on the third permit yes you can take your test on the per third permit so first of all mary and i'm going to be finishing up here soon folks but um mary k um mary donner edt lessons essential driver training that's for anyone who doesn't know it, compulsory driving lessons that you have to do in 2012, so seven years ago nearly, seven, eight years ago. Uh, yeah, as long as the driving instructor uploaded them onto the RSA portal, like it just just um, uploaded them as he should, I'm sure I'm sure he did, he or she did, yeah. Uh, the lessons are absolutely in date. There, there, there'll be no problem there. The only slight problem, Mary, is if, if your learner's permit went out of date by over five years, if your learner permit goes out of date by over five years then you have a problem you may have to start and do the whole edt uh again but i don't think that's the case with you and you can certainly take your test on a third permit there's absolutely no problem there that's the whole idea of the permit is to give you permission to drive permission to learn to drive sorry and to do your test so yes you can take your test on a third permit no problem as long as the learner permit is in date as long as it's valid um excuse me no problem there Jamie Ward, thank you. Very welcome, Jamie. Best wishes. Um, if you have any more comments, folks, get, get them in quick because I'm going to be finishing up here in about five or ten minutes. Um, need in Tom. Hi, Dan. I have a test on the 29th. One of the problems I have is with the brake and the clutch when stopping. How slow before you can press the clutch after a brake? That's a good question, need in Tom. It depends on the car, you see. I would normally say you brake first. And then put the clutch in about two or three seconds before the car starts before before the car uh, stops sorry so you see some clutches if it's a bit more sensitive um you might have to put it in a little bit sooner as in if, if it's more liable to struggle a bit sooner it does depend on the car you see i don't know i, I wouldn't know the car you're driving you see so but your question let me just clarify that again braking clutch when stopping how slow before you can put the clutch in after the brake you see you have to know your car you see how slow it depends on like how soon the car would start to struggle you see i would normally say brake first and stick the clutch in about two to three seconds before the car stops that you should usually be fine if you find your car is still struggling there you might want to put the clutch in a second sooner then you know a bit of trial and error you have to kind of figure that one out for yourself um ranny ranny capel i then how do you know 
how do you know you are stopped on a hill when it is not an obvious hill? Um, by looking a little bit to the left and right and analyzing the road. Probably you're a driver, okay, so probably look to the right. And as you look to the right, kind of look at look at the road and how it kind of interacts with the with the window. You know the window, um, the window. What do you call the the where you where you rest your arm? You know when you're when you're driving, you kind of rest your arm there on that. You kind of have to make an educated guess there because this is the kind of thing that comes with experience. So as you're stopped, just as I said, have a look to the right, and if you see that the road is not kind of following a straight line in relation to your window. You're probably on a hill, you know. If if it's if it's slightly elevated, you're probably on a hill. You might even even when you're stopped, you might just feel when you're stopped. Like 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 I'm sitting in a chair now, but I I know it's it's I'm flat. Like I'm flat. But if I was in a car on a slight lap, I might I might feel a bit more like you know I might I just might feel a little little more elevated. Like you know my I feel that my my backside is slightly more. Uh, depressed than my feet if you get what i'm saying it's just the kind of thing that comes with experience you know but i would say to you if you're unsure in any way just use the handbrake better safe than sorry use the handbrake if you're not sure um molder x still a long queue on driving test yeah not surprised with that is it still based on when you have applied and and do you know how many testers are allocated in each county yeah it's it's kind of is a based on when you applied they do try and prioritize essential workers as i said to you um but generally, it's first come, first serve. You could get in touch with me. You could contact them for a cancellation if, if you wanted to, especially if you're an essential worker. And the email address on the screen there, urgent um, urgent driving test at rsa.ie, is if you if you are an essential worker and you, and you want to get a test sooner. But, but it is first come, first serve, but they do facilitate cancellations as well. Any advice for the... This is Niall. Any advice for the days, nights before the test in regard of practice? Yeah, I would. I would say... um, To definitely say that you, if you have a test in the morning, say maybe, maybe whatever, 9 o'clock or whatever, I would definitely advise um, a driving lesson on the, the, the hour before the test because I think that is, uh, is a good piece of advice. Um, so where it's Nile, because it kind of helps get you focused, helps get you settled, and keeps you in the zone. Okay. As for the night before, um, you have to remember if if it's the night before your test, you ha you have to understand like by that stage, most of the work has either been done or it's not been done. Hopefully, it's been done. Most of your practice has been done. Okay. There's very little you can change the night before your test and you have your test the next day. There's very little you can change because you're, you're at that stage where you've probably done 95 to 97 percent of the work. So if it's the night before, I would just be kind of scanning over some notes. If you, if you take notes, look over your rules of the road, look over the road signs, maybe watch a few of my videos. But don't don't stress, don't worry, don't panic, because if it's the night before your test, there's not really a whole lot of worry or panic, uh, not really a whole lot of good that worrying or panicking can do but i definitely think uh, a lesson the hour before the test is a great idea uh, and is a, is a great piece of advice um so let's see then kevin turl benzo ben benzo whatever that is and cocaine is what he means class three is yeah i was suspecting so kevin so i wasn't i wasn't uh, uh quite sure how to respond but thanks for that clarification enigma 47 any advice for someone who already drives a manual i passed uh, eight months ago congratulations uh, any tips to perfect to perfect driving stick enigma 47 what do you, what did you already pass any advice for someone who already drives a manual uh, already drives a manual what does that mean uh, i passed eight months ago i are you saying you drive an automatic and you're changing to a manual I'm not really sure what you mean if any advice practice 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 in a kind of a quiet area first like a car park get yourself used to the manual stick and the stopping and starting and the clutch, of course. Um, big believer in that. If I have someone on their first lesson, I will always bring them to a nice quiet area first. Uh, quiet area with no cars and do the basics of clutching and first and second gear before we even go near a road, okay? So practice makes perfect there and good luck to you, Enigma. Uh, so I'm just going to fly down through a few comments here, folks. I'll be finishing up there now very, very soon, mainly because I'm absolutely bursting to go to the toilet. Um... Let me see, where were we? Enigma was laughing, wasn't it? Uh, hi, Dane. Lara Ar Aromaya. Hi, Dane. Do you have any tips for staying calm 
while driving, especially when the other drivers display road rage towards you. Well, if other drivers display road rage towards you, Lara, that is their loss. Their loss. That shows that they are weak. That shows that they, the people displaying the road rage, road rage are not in control of their emotions. So they're already coming at you from a point of weakness. You're in a point of strength because you don't seem... If you're the recipient of the road rage, well, then you're not um, you're not showing weakness. You're probably showing calmness or you're learning to drive, possibly. So you're you're showing like you're trying to get on in life. You're doing, the, you're doing all the right things. So remember, first of all, that the person who is angry at you is weak. Weak. Log. As we say, ask Welga, log. Toshi, log. Because they are not in control of their emotions. They're not able to express themselves properly. They don't have the strength of character to remain calm and patient. Because that takes that takes strength. So remember that first. They are weak. Uh, secondly, it's nothing personal, okay? It's nothing personal. It could be you. It could be me. It could be the person who's commented above you. It's If it wasn't you, it would be somebody else. You know what I mean? Um, so that would be my advice there. Uh, it's not pleasant, I know. It's not. But I would advise you just to let it wash over you because at the end of the day, is there any really point in worrying about things that you can't control? And if someone is going to be a raven lunatic in the car beside you or the car behind you, you probably can't control that. You're doing your best. You're trying to be a good driver. You're trying to learn to drive. You're doing the right things. You're doing well. Keep it up. Uh, you can't really control how other people react. So is there any point in worrying about it? But good luck to you, Lara. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, email me daintai at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you have any uh, issues that you want to talk to me about. About uh, Let me know. Damien, so a couple more comments, folks. Damien Fenton, I'm going to fly through these. Multi-lane roundabouts, need to change lanes. I worry I will hit a car on my left. Should I do a shoulder check? Yes. What should I do if I see a car on my left wing mirror? Shoulder check is always good. A brief one, though. Don't, don't give a big, you know, dramatic check for a long period of time. Keep it brief keep it quick um, as in in conjunction with the mirrors um, if you see a car in the left wing well congratulations that's that's good you're meant to, that's what you're meant to see you see so but it depends if the car is close to you so if you see a car in the left wing and he's kind of far away and maybe he's indicating to go on to, to another lane you might be okay it all depends on how close the car is or what the car is doing the other car might hold back and let you go we don't know i would say to you there giving a quick shoulder check is a good idea plenty of mirror checks good idea if you're going to move across move across gradually if you're very unsure and you're not and you're really you really don't feel good just continue to go around the roundabout and try and exit off again the next time okay uh so that's that's if, if you feel like you're in a bit of a vulnerable situation there uh mary k no it didn't then perma still in date Thank, great that's good mary if your perma is in date that's great and you go for that third test absolute or that test on the third permit no problem at all there uh nidden thanks you're very welcome nidden uh, a couple more comments, folks. Cool kids, please tell how to develop habit of watching mirrors regularly, driving, and also any prob And also, I have problems in turning at intersections. I am practicing on automatic. Uh, it looks like you're kind of cool kids. This is you're in the early stage of driving. I imagine Listen, it's it's going to take time. You know, like as human beings, we're born and then we, you know, we sit up and we roll over and then we crawl and then we walk and then we run and then we sprint and you know that's the way that's just that's kind of like the circle of life you have to give it time okay give it time uh you do mirror watching your mirrors regularly you, you, you i mean you want to be careful with that you mirrors are overrated folks okay you don't you don't want to be going around driving and checking your mirrors every four or five seconds that's completely unnecessary and it's uh it's not going to do you much good like the most important thing with driving is looking ahead What's further up the road? What's uh, the person in front doing? Is is there a pedestrian crossing the road? That's what you need to be need to be worried about. For you cool kids, just keep at it, okay? Practice, practice, practice. Get your driving lessons. Get professional driving lessons. Uh, as for turning at intersections, that will all get better over time. Uh, check out my videos on observation and they should help you, okay? But time takes care of everything. Uh, Enigma 47, I wish I had you as an instructor. Well, I wish I had you as a student, but that's the way it is. Thank you for that kind comment very much. Uh, Gabriella de Sordi Resende. Hi, I am not a doctor or nurse, okay, but I work in a fire protection company which has been considered essential services. 
So am I essential worker? I would think so, yeah. I have a driving exam scheduled in November. Gabriella, I would say go for it, Gabriella, yeah. I mean, if you have a schedule in November and you feel like you're ready, and you feel you're ready to give it a go, uh, I would say keep that appointment there because if you, if you cancel it, you have to, I don't know how when you'll, you could be waiting a while for another one. So, And it looks anyway, I say that in the context that it looks like you're working in an essential service anyway. Uh, I know it's not frontline, but you know it is a broad spectrum. So I would say keep that, go for it, the best of luck with your tests. Remember, Gabriella, they're not going to ask you, are you a frontline doctor or nurse or any of that kind of stuff. They're, they're, they don't hold information on you. When you turn up for the test, they'll just test you, okay? Uh, in November, you said as well. So best of luck to you. And last question from Emily Anderson, of all people. Thanks. Do you have a way for us outsiders to contact you with any questions? Yes, I do. Um uh, uh any questions just so so just so, just so we're not holding back emily i should have probably put my email up on screen here i sorry i didn't if you have any questions about driving or you want feedback on a driving test report sheet email me at danetai at gmail.com that's d-a-n-e-t-y-g-h-e at gmail.com okay and i will answer any questions you have there otherwise you can just comment on any of my youtube videos and i'll get back to you there as well okay i try and respond to all comments there's a huge amount of, the, the last two or three weeks the last four or five weeks there's been a lot more comments than usual so i'm i'm struggling to keep up with it but i do always try and answer all the comments in the comment section so comment on any of my it doesn't matter which video any of my videos and i'll try to get back to you there but email me as well emily and i'll answer any questions you have and i think finally then megan quirk because uh, I have to go now soon folks um, but it's been great chatting to you and thanks for everyone for tuning in I've, so Megan Quirk I've only done four EDT lessons and looking into trying to get insurance on a family car but no because I'm 22 the type of car is very expensive I know it might not be able to continue well I would Megan for you I would just continue anyway to get the lessons okay because whether you're going to get insured now or in the future in the long term medium term you have to do the lessons anyway. So I would encourage you to keep doing the lessons. At least at least get the 12 lessons out of the way anyway. And that way you're getting your, uh, you're, you're, you're taking care of your legal requirements and you're going to get better and you're going to improve and you're going to improve your confidence. So definitely keep doing the lessons if you can, if, if you're a essential worker and all that, in, in, in like do the lessons in with, with respect to the guidelines that are allowed at the moment. Um, and as for insurance, yeah, you know, Maybe the car is expensive, it might be a big, powerful car, who knows, but shop around, you know, shop around. Get in touch with Aviva and Axa, they might be able to do a good deal for you. Uh, shop around, you know, you might get a good deal if you shop around, because, you know, that's how we, that's how we, that's that's the only real option you have there. The best luck to you anyway, Megan. Uh, so, Megan, again there, my lesson, my lessons for the next six weeks, but in terms of, Oh, I think she should continue to comment. She she might not be able to continue the lessons for the next six weeks. Yeah, probably not. I've cancelled a few myself. But in terms of, of booking a driving test, I've heard there might be a large waiting list till March. And based on Cork, just want to know is it good? To, is it just want to know is it good to book soon? Yeah, it's it's no harm to book. I mean, you can book your test there, Megan. But they're not going to give you a date until you've all twelve lessons done, which is part of the reason why I said you should continue to do the lessons anyway, uh, provided that you're able to during these six weeks, because. While you can apply for your test before the 12 lessons are done, they will take your money, the RSA, but they won't process your application completely. Uh, they won't give you a test date until you have all 12 lessons uploaded, okay? So I would uh, get the 12 lessons done uh, as soon as you can anyway, um, while showing um, you know respect for the COVID-19 uh, guidelines. Uh, yeah, there might be a bit of a backlog with the driving test, but sure, you're, you're better off being in the system than outside the system, you know? Um, you know, you, you can still apply for the test if you want, but just remember, you won't get a date until you do until that 12th lesson is done and uploaded, okay? Um, so, good luck to you anyway, Megan. Um, as I said to you, if you're an essential worker, you can you can email urgentdrivingtest at rsa.ie or when all this is over and when you've done your 12th lesson, get in touch with the RSA and see if they'll put you on a priority list. Uh, they'll usually be flexible enough there, you know? Uh, Emily Anderson, thank you. You're very welcome, Emily. Megan Quirk again. Uh, I've been told that my ADI instructor hasn't gotten back to me. Ooh, that's unfortunate. My provisional license, I presume you mean learner permit, is only at six months on March 22nd too. Um, your ADI hasn't got back to you about... Uh, about what, actually? Has not gotten back to you about... What, 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 
right, the insurance. She's done four lessons. Um, yeah, well, lesson four, if your ADI instructor hasn't got back to you, that's unfortunate. Um, your learner permit is only six months on March 22nd. Yeah, so you can you can do your test at at six months um, on March 22nd, yeah. Um, yeah, so I would just, just get in touch with the instru with the ADI instructor again. I mean, I, I mean, he should have gotten back to you if, if, if you were in touch with him over something. Um, about if he can take me since I'm not essential. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I've had the same thing myself. Well, well I'd, I'd always get back to people. So that's unfortunate if he's not gotten back to you. Um, I mean, you, you're you not confined to one ADI instructor, Megan. You can you can choose another instructor if you want. Um, but as instructors, we're not really advised to take lessons with anybody who's not essential. So I have a very small few lessons at the moment, but they are for essential workers who have a test coming up. You know what I mean? So that's just the, the guidelines that I'm following at the moment. But uh, try do try keep in touch with your ADI, uh, and if you if you're not getting any answers out of them, you you have the option of of going to another ADI. You don't have to stay with the same driving instructor for all twelve lessons. You know, I've I've people have done lessons with me, and then they went to somebody else. Just like I've taken lessons with people who have done maybe three or four or five with other instructors. Okay, so you you mean you're the customer? You have that option to shop around. But Megan, like I said to Emily there, my email is daintai at gmail.com. D-A-N-E-T-Y-G-H-E at gmail.com. If you have any, any questions or anything like that, just send me an email and I'll, and I'll get back to you ASAP. Uh, Megan Quirk, again there. Thank you very, very welcome, Megan. I know it's difficult times at the moment, just looking into booking after December 1st. Obviously, want to log, obviously want to log the 12th time. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, difficult times, like you said, Megan, and the best luck to you. Uh, listen, you'll get there eventually. I know it's, it's tricky times. You'll get there eventually, though. You know, time takes care of everything. Uh, hang the DJ, Slong Dane. Yes, hang Slong of all. Beg me, Rash, and Shock and Shikachi. Or in Shock and Shikuin, sorry. I'll be back next week. So, hopefully, folks, I'll be back again next Saturday at 12 o'clock again. Um, I'm not, so, I am know I've gone at 3 o'clock on a few Saturdays. I'm probably going to change to 12 o'clock. Um, so, hopefully, back again live next Saturday. Would you just want to, Brian O'Sullivan there, hi Dan, I have my driving test next Friday, non-essential, if I, if I do cancel and reschedule my test, will I be prohibit? Will I be prioritised or will it be six months until I get a new test? I'm not sure if it will be prioritised, Brian, but the advice is that if you're non-essential, you should cancel it so that an essential worker can take that slot. The RSA then will then reschedule your test free of charge. Uh, hopefully you won't be waiting six or eight months i would say to you the advice is to cancel it and then after these six weeks are over get back in touch with the rsa then and see if they can kind of do you a favor because you did the right thing in this month of october november whatever it is because you did the right thing here hopefully they'll try and sort you out as well so i hope that that helps you brian and the very best of luck to you and uh, cloda plunkett slon slonga full product cloda thank you for tuning in so folks Big thank you for all your comments. Thank you for those that shared your information with me. Uh, I really appreciate it. And thank you for the donations I got. You can make any uh, voluntary donation by PayPal if you want. And I really appreciate all the support. Uh, Brian O'Sullivan, you're very welcome, Brian. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to be signing off now, folks. And I hope to have a video up this week on driving test tips, hopefully Wednesday or Thursday. So stay tuned to the channel for that. Uh, I'll be live again next Saturday answering your questions and giving you any updates that I can uh, present to you from the RSA. Uh, so, folks, thank you for your support. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and I'll be back very soon. Uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you again. All the best.